can be proud of me. I did lift when I hit the wall. I drove <laughs> right through it. Alan. Well, I just talked to Robbie Loomis, Jeff Gordon's crew chief. I asked him if they had enough fuel to make it to the finish. His response, good Lord willing. They had to hang on, stay somewhere around those cars they're racing with for a place in the chase and see if they can sneak into the top ten by the checkered flag waves. We're going to find out right now who's got what. Because you have got to pick up the positions while the field is tightly bunched. That's Kurt Busch underneath Jeff Gordon. This 41 car, Casey Mears, has been fast all night. Marty about the 97. You know, when he made a great point, BP, he said it's unbelievable pace at night, how much faster it is than it was during the day. Kurt said his car, very unpredictable. When he hit the gas, jump up the racetrack, sometimes as many as two lanes, it's got to be a very uncomfortable feeling for a driver. Especially when, the, <laughs> when you're on the outside of that guy. That's exactly right. <laughs> you like Casey Mears' car tonight, on BP. Yes, he is. 41 car. When he, he made an unscheduled stop, got a lap down, and on one of the restarts started in front of the leader and, and just simply drove away from Tony Stewart. Look at that 10 car. Smoked those tires on the... I think that's more than a skirt, brother. Yeah. It's Kyle Busch looking at the... Matt Kenseth. And two laps ago, Kyle Busch ran his fastest lap of the night. Fast in that five car. Going back to the high side. Ooh, a little loose right there. Coming off of turn four. All the folks in Foreman Beach, Florida, very happy for Alan Gustafson, the crew chief. It's easy to say. Yeah, I know it is. I struggled with that one. But I did want to give Alan some credit. There you go. Yeah, now he's working the low side. Boy, that five car works just about anywhere. 20-year-old Kyle Busch. Trying to pass former series champion Matt Kenseth for the lead in California, and he's got it. Dave Burns. After the 17 car beat them off pit road, Kyle Busch radioed back to his crew. Hey, you guys know that 17 team is a team to beat every week. Don't worry about it. Crew chief Alan Gustafson Thank radioed, you. That, you bet, BP, radioed back to his driver. Hey, we appreciate you making up for it on the track, buddy. He's doing that. Johnson, Mark Martin in the sixth, and Sterling Marlin, who has been there all night. That's fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Kurt Busch is there in the 97. Matt? Bill, in practice, Mark Martin told me at the end of practice Friday night, whatever your car is doing, that's where it will be magnified. If you're loose, it'll really be loose. The eight is smoking, Dale Earnhardt Jr. The engine's going up, Bill. Off the pace was running 30th. And if anyone, if anyone believed that Junior still had a shot, Cinderella man season and his chances at the chase right here, going up in smoke. Oh, yeah. Well, that, big, though. that diesel finally did blow up. Yeah, it did. Like there's any crash on the front or anything just but he did say earlier that he, he didn't like the way the engine felt or right. sounded and didn't think it was going to last right to the garage matt i believe the term was a sherman tank and he said that he hoped it would go up big and fire but we didn't see any fire but his championship chances have now ended for dale earnhardt jr and the bud guys yeah, there's a stream of oil, oil following yeah. that eight car that's not a See that uh, oil coming out the back. So, yeah, it blew big. You know, it's almost like these guys, I, it, it's almost probably a relief, BP, because, okay, now they're out of it. They know they're out of it. You know, they've got 11 races now between now and the end of the year to try to get things turned around a little bit and come out next year smoking. You know, that's the best thing about our playoff system. Sure, we've got 10 guys battling for the championship. We, we, we've got 33 other guys out there trying to win the race and get ready for the next year, like right. Junior. Greg Biffle is third in the championship standings, and I know you've talked to him, but he really gives credit to how hard they worked and raced last year, getting him the early five wins this season and making them so strong this season. Ever see Junior just pull over and wow! Man, that was big time. If you're going to blow it up, that's how to do it. Yeah. Hmm. 
All right, now we don't have a problem with fuel. Oh, here's Junior. Give me a second. Climbing out. I know you're down there, Marty. I heard you talking. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has climbed from the car, and uh, you thought you had a problem, and it, it went big when it went. Yeah, I had, uh, my motor was terrible, man, all night long, and I thought my, something might be wrong with it, but uh, we just got beat me down the straightaway real, real bad when it was half decent in the corner. Still didn't make up for what we lost on the straightaway, so I don't know, you know, it finally broke. Maybe I, I did run it hot in qualifying, but uh, maybe that's kind of the result of what we have here, but. Real disappointed in how to, how to motor perform up to that point anyway, so, oh well. Mathematically, the championship is over, Junior. How does that make you feel? Uh, James, it's been over for <laughs> at least 80 laps, man. Our car was horrible. Uh, glad it's over with. Ready to go to Richmond. We tested there, and hopefully we can get a good run. We'll try to get some wins for this year's out. And I promise my fans. The Melted Swiss has again proven more than I can resist. Though it takes great inner strength to forego the crispy option, today I shall instead have my chicken club grilled. Oh, and can you kindly recommend a drink with that, monsieur? Indulge your sophisticated side with McDonald's new premium chicken sandwiches. They're the tastiest flavor combinations made fresh daily with first-class ingredients. Dude, can you buy lunch? I promise not to tell anyone about this. Hey, this is Dylan Hart Jr. Test drive a pair of jeans from Wrangler Jeans Company, and you can win your own test drive around the track with me. But I'm driving. Go to Wrangler.com to find out how to enter. Leave this cat wrong like that. The nominees for the Major League Baseball Comeback Player of the Year Award, sponsored by Pfizer, are now online. Vote, and you may win a trip to throw out a ceremonial first pitch at the World Series. I had a really good time tonight. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Okay. Yep. It's getting really late. My... Yeah. Okay. Bye. It's different when you've got a Harley Davidson. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. Tom, for previews and predictions on each Nextel Cup race by Benny Parsons. There's also analysis by Benny and Alan Bestwick on the hottest topics, including the upcoming race for the Nextel Cup. It's all at NBCSports.com. Take a look at the championship standings as we close in on the 20 to go mark. Stewart Johnson, Biffle, Wallace all locked in. Martin's got a shot at locking in tonight. Same for Kurt Busch. The real race starts back there at eight. Carl Edwards has really opened up some ground over Matt Kenseth now. But Kenseth has gone from 11th to 9th. Newman back from 9th to 10th. And Jeff Gordon was in 10th. Here are, the guys, no here are the guys that are the chasers right now. McMurray, 50 back. Gordon has dropped 60 behind. Elliot Sadler hanging on by a thread. And behind Newman in 10th spot. Let's check in on the chasers. Start with Allen and the 99 of Carl Edwards. Well, no matter how the night comes out, from this point forward, it's been a tremendous rally for Carl Edwards. Bill from down in 38 to second. He just called it. Chief said the car is tight in the center. Means he doesn't have the front end grip. He needs to cut in the corner. The crew said, just take care of it. We're okay. Dave? Last week, Matt Kenseth broke a 56 win, winless drought by Bristol. Tonight, they're running extremely well, and that's good because they tested at Richmond last Monday and Tuesday. They didn't have a very good test. He needs to make his mark here. We saw the championship standings just a moment ago, and as of now, Ryan Newman is in. He fell back as far as 30th at one point tonight, describing his car as horrible. On this most recent run, he says the car much better, but loose. Matt? Jamie McMurray, he lost the handle. They've tried to tweak the car. It is still bad, tight. You saw the stand. 50 points of the chase at this year. They can get a good run here to go into Richmond and not have to have a solid run there, Dave, but it's looking good.
Kevin Harvick's crew has been working hard all night to try to figure out why this car is so loose. In fact, they at one point put the tire slated for the front of the car on the rear and the tire slated for the rear on the front to see if it would help, and it hasn't. Dave Elliott Sadler running back in the 23rd position. Now, he made a second pit stop earlier in the race, lost a lot of track position, added a spring rubber. The car, extremely loose, not able to tighten it up. The 88 car of Dale Jarrett made a pit stop the last time. They made a pit stop before that. They've made a lot of stops tonight. This brand new race car for them just will not have been up and down on the track bar. It's been loose. It's been tight. It's been all over the place. A lot to handle tonight for DJ. Alan? Well, earlier this afternoon before the race started, Robbie Loomis, Jeff Gordon's crew chief, told me that because this close race to the chase is so important, the pressure was on the crew chief to make exactly the right strategy call at the end of the race. They made the call not to pit on the last caution. Jeff has slipped from 13th back to 28th. They need a yellow flag badly. Jeff wants to get these tires off that race car. Thanks, guys. It might be too late for the 24 now. Yeah, they, even if the they, caution uh, came out. They're in trouble right now. Big trouble. Because even if they had change tires, they have no track position whatsoever. Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the 32 tide ride. Alongside of Gordon. Jeremy Mayfield right behind him. He's all over the place. Yes, he is. And he doesn't want anybody on his I'll guarantee you that if he's loose. He wants that 19 car someplace else behind, besides being behind him. Because when the car pull up behind you, it does loosen you up a great deal. Gordon has slipped from 10th in the standings to 12. 59 out of the last chase position. You're not missing anything up front. Kyle Busch by three seconds over Kenseth and Carl Edwards. Tony Stewart in the 20 car, looking inside of Edwards. Starting to come back, Tony Stewart. Drives in behind him. Allen, I just talked to Greg Zipidelli before that last restart, Bill. He told me they adjusted their car for the longer run. Because the cautions had been regularly spaced here, they compensated back the other way, but they figured they were set for green to from that last restart, so he expects to be faster than some of these guys around him the closer we get to the checkers. Good timing on that. Worked on Carl Edwards, sure that's for did. sure. Passed him and pulled him away. That was a perfect pass, too. We talked to, uh, saying earlier, you have to really have a lot of momentum and actually slide up in front of the guy that you're passing just coming off before, and Stewart did it perfect. You know, we talked about Jeff Gordon just a moment ago when not wanting someone behind him. I think we can go inside our Home Depot virtual garage and show you more about what we're talking about when what happens when someone does pull up behind you. Just like that. The nine car behind the 99. If the car is the least bit loose at all, that will disturb you. And you see the 41 car, Casey Mears on the apron, he had been in in the pit area for several laps trying to figure out what their problem was. He'd been warned by NASCAR to pick up his speed on the track. Allen? Well, Bill, we're still inside that 25-lap window from the last restart where Casey Kane was going to have all of his speed. The problem for them is going to be that this race went green with 35 laps to go. <laughs> when they get down to these next uh, 10 laps or so, we'll see if they've made it better or if they slip back a little bit in the closing miles. Did you see the 99 car on the apron? <laughs> I mean, when he goes down the corner, and, and normally your car's tight if you drive down on the apron. If you drive down on the apron like here in one and two, it, it'll loosen your car up big time. He's right there, but boy, three and four, he was on the apron. Evidently, his car is tight, and he's trying some way to get it to turn a little bit, to loosen it up some. That'll do it. Allen? Uh, Carl Edwards is reporting a loose condition. Really? EP. He needs back end grip. Yeah. Huh. I'll tell you what, if he can drive on the apron and be loose, he's my hero. <laughs> 13 to go. 